Talmud trainee friend of the late great Dr. Ken Leishner. Dr. Ken has been a tremendous influence on my life. I first met Dr. Ken in the spring of 1994 through a college teammate, Lou D'Agostino. It was my freshman year at the University of Rhode Island. Lou raved of Dr. Ken and his wife, Kathy. I'm from Staten Island, New York, and I traveled to his gym, Iron Island Gym, in Oceanside, Long Island. It was a beautiful gym. Walking in, seeing pictures of Stephen Boyd, Kevin Torbett, Greg Roman, Derek Atkins, and others who trained under Dr. Ken. It was very impressive. On first meeting Dr. Ken, he was friendly, yet I could sense his serious and professional nature, which I witnessed every time he trained me. He expected punctuality, preparedness, and full commitment. He instilled in me the confidence that I could one day play professional football, which I did, with no injuries, which I attribute to Dr. Ken's tutelage. Dr. Ken was a true family man. He loved and respected his wife and his mother. He loved his children and showed his love, not only to them, but to all he knew that he called friends. He was one of the finest men that I've ever known and still is. God bless you, Dr. Ken. I love you. Certainly spend more than a couple of minutes discussing the influence Dr. Ken's had on my life, but I'm gonna keep it brief and I'll focus on two things. Number one, he has, he's a huge factor in what I do today for a living. I'm a strength training teacher at Limbrook High School, technically a phys ed teacher, but all my classes take place in the weight room. Without him, it never would have been possible. You know, the things I learned through him allowed me to formulate a class based around strength training, getting stronger, et cetera, all, all in a major way because of what I learned through him. And I remember the first time I sat down with him telling him that I wanted to train with him. I remember him asking me, you sure you want to do this? Do you know what you're getting yourself into? And I was like, yeah, you know, I know what I want to do. And you know, it was always a rude awakening. I think anyone who trained with him for the first time found it to be a rude awakening. But he said, I'll take you for two reasons, because I'm not really taking clients right now. One, you seem sincere. You seem like you definitely want to be here. And two, you're a teacher. You can someday pass this on to kids, and that's important. And here I am doing that. So hopefully that's made him happy, and uh, you know, that's just giving back. Second thing is my whole friend group, in many ways, is partly responsible because of Doc. He's, the, he's sort of like the cog, the centerpiece of how everybody met. Either we've all trained with him, met through him, um, trained at his gym, in some way, shape, or form, the people I choose to spend time with, which are very few outside of my family, are all associated with him, and I wouldn't trade them for anything, and that's very important. So Doc, thank you for everything you've ever done for me. You're always thought of, you're thought of every day. I knew Ken for about 33 years and uh, was very proud to say that I was his last trainee. Um, it's impossible to encapsulate what Doc meant to people. He was a powerful presence. He pushed you past your limits. He taught you how to desire and achieve nothing but perfection. Um, he was more than a mentor more than a coach, uh, more than a big brother. He was a good friend. And as far as a trainer, um, I would probably say that there was no one better that could push people past what they thought they could do. Um, later on, in the later years with Ken, um, I introduced him to my son, who became quite proficient in powerlifting as well. We traveled to many meets with Ken, um, all over, and really learned m much more about the man than um, just the coach. He was a very intelligent man, and he was so famous that we didn't realize just how famous he was until we 
got to many of these meets and we had people coming up to us asking if we would take their pictures with, uh, with Ken. And um, I just knew him as a great friend and mentor, but I got to realize this was a very important man. And I'm so proud to have known him and could call him friend. I am so pleased that Logan University is establishing the Dr. Ken Leisner Memorial Scholarship because Dr. Ken was a legend. And I know that we throw that word around a lot these days, but he truly was. His inspiration on so many people is remarkable. I can tell you that I was a trainee of his for many years, I think 10 years, and uh, I had never experienced somebody who put more effort, care uh, into each person he worked with. Um, I could tell you that Dr. Ken's setup was very, very unique. While we spent most of our time inside uh, the gym, I kind of looked forward to the days when we can get out into the backyard or into his garage. Um, there were things to work out with I had never thought of working out with before. I mean, imagine thing 100 plus pound cement balls. Imagine doing curls or presses with an anvil. We had uh, that wheel he would throw tons of weight on. You'd lift it up with your arms and try to carry it around in circles. Dr. Ken was special. Um, he took incredible care to make sure that he knew how hard to push you, but without hurting you. There was that line. Somehow he got you right up to that line. For some of us, we just collapse on the floor. For others, like my nephew, he would just throw up all over the place. And not only that, he'd bring the basket over to Ryan uh, <laughs> to make sure he didn't get it all over the place because everybody who knows Ken knows he's a bit of a clean freak. Um, he also had some unique barbecuing skills. That was one of his passions in life. And I'm not talking about a Weba grill or one of these Traeger pellet grills. He could use a garbage can or anything he could make for himself. While uh, I don't suspect you would find uh, barbecued bologna on any menu, it is something he made uh, that I will actually remember. It was awesome. Um, Tim was also kind of um, not what you would call technologically savvy, but yet he always wanted to take my cell phone and video me doing some ridiculous things. Uh, for which I appreciate because now I got some videos of myself working out uh, with Dr. Ken. He was a one of a kind, really a special guy. The um, honor that Logan University is bestowing with this uh, memorial scholarship uh, is incredible and I'm pleased that every student who receives that scholarship has a little piece of Dr. Ken in his mind as he works hard to become the best that they can be. Um, if you can find a Dr. Ken in your life, do so. Keep them close. Those kinds of people are very rare. I met Dr. Ken in 1985 when I decided to stop smoking and get healthy. Dr. Ken was writing a newsletter at the time which focused on high intensity training. And I saw a couple of copies, read them, thought to myself, this is a very good writer and a smart guy, and maybe he could train me. And so I called him and asked, not expecting much of anything. And sure enough, he welcomed me with open arms and asked me to come on over, let's try to work out and uh, see how it goes. Uh, I loved it. He was absolutely the single toughest man I ever met in my life, as well as the most compassionate. If Dr. Ken heard of a problem that someone had, whether that was a child or a teenager or an adult, he was the first guy to volunteer money, time, effort, whatever it took to help solve that problem. It didn't matter whether he knew the person or not, as long as he heard there was a problem. And at the same time, he was as tough as they come. He killed himself when he was working out, much harder than he did any of his pupils. He was difficult. If you decided to slack off in the middle of the training, he was the toughest Marine drill instructor you ever met in your life. In any event, Ken was also, as many of you know, an equipment junkie. 
Anytime you showed up at his gym, you expected to find something new that either he built himself or he bought just because he wanted to try it out and see how well it worked. He got that way back in the early 70s when he was in Florida working directly for Arthur Jones at Nautilus, the famous equipment maker, um, as a uh, trainer and also as an equipment tester. And he never lost his uh, taste for trying out new equipment, finding new ways to torture you. That's actually what it was. Um, I, you know, I could tell Dr. Ken stories for hours. He, he was undoubtedly, as Reader's Digest would say, the most unforgettable person I've ever met. Um, and I still very, feel very blessed to be part of his extended family with Kathy and Barry and Sal and Kevin and all the other people who feel close to Dr. Ken. Uh, I also must say I'm very proud of the fact that I was the guy who talked him into opening the Iron Island Gym in Oceanside. Uh, he didn't originally want to do it. Um, we talked for a long, long time about it, over many days. And he finally agreed that he would do it. And as a result, he actually was able to train and touch more people than he could just in his little basement. Dr. Uh, Ken is rightfully a legend in his world. In the world of training and the world of Long Island and all of the professionals that he trained, football and basketball, uh, the many, many people whose lives he touched remember him and will keep his memory in mind forever. I loved him and I still love him. Thank you, Dr. Ken. Dr. Ken was a very unique individual. He was probably one of the most intense individuals I've ever met but he was a teddy bear at heart. Not a real big guy, standing around five foot six. Um, Doc definitely projected a way larger presence. Somebody who would be like seven feet tall and 400 pounds. He, um, he wasn't all out now, not at all. But he had a way of projecting a larger than life image around him. I think that was because of the level of intensity that he exuded. Um, he was always thinking, um, one of the smartest people I've ever met, and uh, I marvel at his ability to have crammed in as many things as he did in the years that he walked the earth. Uh, it's kind of almost like the Forrest Gump of the weightlifting world. He was in so many places and influenced so many people. Doc, to me, seemed that way. He's kind of a larger-than-life character, and you know, for those who, who read his Life in the Lost series in Milo, you probably think, oh, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. Well, you know, I, I've met the people that uh, he wrote about. You know, Jack Lawrence, his training partner. You know, these are real people, and, 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 and the guy just just did what he said he was going to do. And um, not a more generous guy would you ever meet either. Whenever I, I go to his house, um, I seem to be leaving uh, without empty hands, whether it was a couple of pints of Grater's ice cream or... Uh, a piece of gym equipment, um, you know, you'd say, oh, hey, I heard you're looking for a 75-pound sandbag. Yeah, I'm going to have three of them lying around. Yeah, take one. Doc, you want any money for it? No, no, take it. Nah. You know, he was just so kind in that way. And he and his wife, Kathy, I admire all the charity work they've done over the years. They've done it without fanfare. And it just, it just says so much about their characters. And, um, you know, that just... He, when you hang around somebody like that, they can't but help rub off and have a positive influence on you. And um, he has told me to give back. So, um, you know, if there's young, young folks who uh, come to me looking for tips or advice, I'm more than happy to pay it forward. It's something that I, I learned to do. Um, and I'm happy to do it. And um, you know, I just always envision Doc, you know, looking down, making sure that I'm doing my best, whether it's giving out training advice or he, right here in my gym. If I think I'm done with the set, I could always hear Doc, right in this ear over here, just saying to me, you know, you got one more. Not yelling at me, but just always kind of 
pushing me off to make the best in every step that I do. Dallas training was second to none. Uh, I don't think there's one person around who had more of an influence in the IA game than Doc. The amount of articles he wrote, the amount of people he had a positive influence on, the amount of people that he's never met who he's had a positive influence on. He was an amazing man and I'm very honored um, to be a part of this and I'm very happy to see that his legacy will live on through this scholarship program. Um, for those who are granted these scholarships, I know they have to be picked because they're hard workers. Just remember, Dr. Ken Leister was one of the hardest workers the world has ever known. So, for you scholarship winners, congratulations. And uh, just remember, Dr. Ken is watching from up above. And you're going to make sure that you put in your best efforts to be the best that you can be.